Eiko Fukushima received a Bachelor of Engineering degree in electronics in 1958 and a PhD degree in electrical engineering in 1966 from Kyoto University. After graduating, he worked for NHK, that's the Japanese Broadcasting Corporation, where he was with the Technical Research Laboratories, Broadcasting Science Research Laboratories and Science and Technology Research Laboratories. He was a professor at Osaka University from 1989 to 1999 at the University of Electrocommunications from 1999 to 2001, at Tokyo University of Technology from 2001 to 2006, and a visiting professor at Kansai University from 2006 to 2010. He is now a senior research scientist at Fuzzy Logic Systems Institute. Among his awards are the 2021 Bauer Award and Prize for Achievement in Science from the Franklin Institute, the Achievement Award, Distinguished Achievement and Contributions Award and Excellent Paper Awards from IEICE, the Neural Networks Pioneer Award from IEEE, the APNNA Outstanding Achievement Award, the Excellent Paper Award and Ac Academic Award from JNNS, the INNS Helmholtz Award, the Pioneer Award from ELM 2017, the Kenjiro Takayanagi Award 2019, from the Kenjiro Takayanagi Foundation. He was the founding president of the Japanese Neural Network Society and was a founding member on the Board of Governors of INNS. He's a former president of APNNA, the Asia Pacific Neural Network Assembly. He is one of the pioneers in the field of neural networks and has been engaged in modeling neural networks of the brain since 1965. His special interests lie in modeling neural networks of the higher brain functions, especially the mechanism of the visual system. In 1979, he invented the neocognitron, which has the ar architecture of a deep convolutional neural network. Improvement and extension of the neocognitron is still continuing. By introducing top-down connections and new learning methods to the neocognitron, various kinds of neural networks have been developed. When two or more patterns are presented simultaneously, the selective attention model can segment and recognize individual patterns in turn by switching its attention. Even if a pattern is partially occluded by other objects, we human beings can often recognize the occluded pattern. An extended neocognitron can now have such human-like ability and can not only recognize occluded patterns, but also restore them by completed occluding contours. He also developed neural network models for extracting visual motion and optic flow, for extracting a symmetry axis and, axis and many others. He is currently interested in new learning rules for neural networks. Oh, Professor, Professor Fukushima. You have a very distinguished resume. Oh, thank you. Let me turn this over to you and to begin to ask. How did you get into the field? Well, uh, when, I, when I first joined the NHK, Jap Japanese Broadcasting Corporation, and uh, were in the Technical Research Laboratory. I first uh, made the research on the 3D TV and also our efficient coding of television signals. And uh, for the work for our efficient coding of TV signals, I got the PhD degree. And uh, in 1965, MHK established a broadcasting science research laboratory where we make the basic research laboratory uh, 
and uh, we wanted to make the research in the interdisciplinary research between uh, uh, neurophysiology, psychology, and engineering. And I was in the group and I learned about the neurophysiology of visual system of cat and monkey. And at that time, uh, Hilbert and Wiesel were very active and they recorded their neurons in the uh, visual cortex of uh, mammals. And they, uh, they uh, well, uh, classified these neurons into simple cells, complex cells, and hypercomplex cells. I was very much fascinated by their uh, hypothesis and wanted to make a neural network model. At first, I made the neural network model, uh, which has, uh, well, I forgot, maybe seven or eight layers. And uh, it already had the uh, architectural convolution. And when the uh, input pattern, like uh, uh, line drawing, curvilinear line drawing, and in the deep layer, we can have the response when where the input pattern is curved, and where the input pattern is straight, there's no uh, response. So uh, the network uh, can extract curvature from the input image. The architecture of the network already had the, uh, well, architecture of uh, convolutional neural networks, but it didn't have any ability of learning. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to uh, make it, uh, give it the ability of uh, learning. During that time in 1960s, uh, perceptron was very popular. Uh, especially three-layered perceptron. Although it has the ability of learning, uh, the, only the uh, deep layer cells had the flexible uh, connection, and the, uh, the uh, intermediate layer cells had fixed uh, connections. So uh, everyone was <coughs> fascinated and the uh, Make the learning of the uh, perceptron, three layer perceptron. Uh, but there are, I thought that there are, if the number of layers is increased, the ability of the perceptron will be increased. However, uh, we didn't know uh, any learning rule uh, appropriate for uh, training the uh, multi layer neural network. So, uh, I propose to use uh, competitive learning where our every cell, our cell or in the network compete with uh, its neighboring cells if it has the maximum output among the uh, neurons uh, in a small area around it, uh, it can have its input connection uh, reinforced. So uh, <clears throat> I, I introduced the uh, well, learning room and, room and then contracted the neural network, which I named it Cognitron. When the uh, input pattern is, uh, training patterns are presented repeatedly into the input layer, the cell in the network come to respond selectively uh, only one of the input pattern, training pattern. So uh, the, uh, Although the network uh, had the ability of uh, learning and can be trained, uh, it didn't have the ability of uh, accepting shift in the input pattern. If the input pattern is shifted or deformed, uh, the cognitron, uh, the network I made, uh, constructed the cognitron, uh, cannot recognize it the same uh, pattern as, as uh, before. So uh, I wanted to give it the ability of uh, well, accepting uh, deformed or shifted patterns. And uh, I got the hint again from the uh, well, neurophysiological findings uh, that the uh, well, connection between retina to the optic tectum. Optic tectum is the uh, uh, the visual center of uh, lower animals, such as fish or uh, 
well, frogs. And uh, in, the, in such animals, even if the optic nerve is cut, uh, if the optic nerve is regenerated and make the uh, uniform uh, connection from a retina to tectum uh, again. And if the, uh, when the optic nerve is cut, uh, if the half of the tectum is removed, the whole uh, retina will be uh, well projected uh, to the half tectum uh, continuously, uh, keeping the retinotopy. So uh, it gave me a hint uh, for uh, introducing the well, hypothesis that uh, to use uh, seed cells in the training of the uh, convolutional network. Seed cell means a uh, cell that works like a seed in crystal growth. If the seed cell burns uh, some uh, input stimulus, uh, then the other cell in its vicinity uh, will be uh, will come to have the same or uh, empty connection as a seed cell. By introducing that seed, the idea of a seed cell, I made the uh, network that can uh, recognize its patterns uh, and um, maybe, uh, what should I say, uh, it's the uh, combination of uh, cognition and the uh, ability of uh, the architecture deformation, which was uh, realized by the curvature extracting network. So uh, by introducing the, the idea, I uh, made a neural, uh, neural network module, uh, which I, which I uh, named the neocognitum, because the network can uh, recognize deformed patterns and uh, can be trained uh, by uh, in that case, by a supervised learning. And then uh, this, that's the origin of the neocognitron. And uh, it already had the ability of uh, <clears throat> self-organization and uh, well, uh, it had the ability of <clears throat> learning and can recognize different patterns. And uh, I think it's the origin of a deep convolutional network, which is very popular uh, recently. And uh, even now, I'm trying to extend the uh, neocognitum and uh, also improve and extend the ability of the neocognitum. For example, uh, by uh, adding it the well of uh, background signals. Uh, well, or I made the network that can um, have the ability of selective attention. And uh, if a uh, uh, number of uh, stimulus is given, the uh, network can focus its attention to one of them and recognize it. And even if the input pattern is uh, partly uh, deteriorated or uh, missing, uh, still the uh, network can uh, restore the missing part. And I also made some uh, network that can recognize uh, uh, well uh, motion of the empty image, for example, or rotation or expansion of the empty image uh, can be detected by the network. So uh, I also made some network that can recognize uh, symmetry axis from uh, some different patterns. So uh, I'm uh, interested in uh, realizing the uh, ability of human vision uh, and to uh, try to realize it by uh, neural networks. That's very impressive that you were able to do all of this in, in those early days when computers were much slower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <clears throat> when I first made the research on the new quantum, <clears throat> I had to make the uh, hardware to uh, 
well, in, to input the output uh, visual uh, information. Well, uh, at the computer at that time didn't have the ability of uh, accepting uh, visual information. So uh, I made very large hardware, uh, which uh, can uh, capture visual patterns and uh, also uh, the output from the uh, output uh, in, uh, well, uh, up the image from the uh, computer was a very uh, difficult problem. When I first started the, the network, uh, we didn't have any such uh, facilities. So uh, we, we have to make the research by making uh, hardware uh, which can capture visual information and also display the output. Uh, visually on a screen. So uh, it was a very large uh, hardware. Well, and the, we had many racks of uh, in huge uh, hardware systems. And uh, well, uh, when I first made the such uh, research, um, for such system uh, was when I was working for uh, efficient coding of TV signals. Uh, at that time, uh, we didn't have any input signal, uh, input machine. So uh, I used it, the uh, machine, which used to be used, which was uh, used for, uh, well, uh, well, what should I say? Uh, during the, uh, Rome Olympic uh, game. Uh, for that purpose, uh, MHK uh, established a uh, system which record the, uh, well, recorded by the 16 fil uh, millimeter film and uh, which was uh, uh, captured by a slow scanning TV camera. And then it was sent by a uh, shortwave uh, short way from uh, Rome to Tokyo. And uh, in Tokyo, the uh, signal was uh, recorded again on a, a, a film, uh, 16 film, a millimeter film. And then uh, we, uh, MHK made the, uh, well, uh, reading the Olympic Games, Rome Olympic Games. Uh, we still had that system. So uh, I, uh, got the system and uh, tried to uh, modify it to be able to uh, make the computer simulation of uh, neural networks. And the, uh, so uh, when I first started the neocognitive model, uh, the input signal was uh, captured by the uh, TV camera. Uh, well, movie camera, not a TV camera, a movie camera. And then uh, it was uh, uh, recorded on the 16 millimeter um, movie film. And then uh, it was in, uh, captured into the computer. And then the output is also displayed uh, on a TV screen, uh, very slow scanning. And, so we cannot see uh, anything if we see the CRT. So uh, it was recorded on the uh, well, uh, film. And then, uh, so the, how the response that would be. And I also used in the initial state, the output of the cells in the neocognitum was displayed uh, by a line printer and the, well, the array of uh, numerals are uh, displayed, and uh, we put a uh, very small, uh, well, about uh, five uh, millimeter square, uh, well, a uh, gray scale, uh, well, paper, and we put it on the large uh, screen. Uh, we pasted it on the large screen. And uh, we uh, recorded, uh, we captured it by a uh, photograph uh, uh, by a camera, 
and got the uh, up, how the art become. So the uh, if an art system of the visual information was very hard at that time. So the uh, not only for making the neural network model, but also how to display and how to input the input image was a large problem at that time. Oh. Now, and you are continuing even to the present time, improving the capability of the neocognitron? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to <clears throat> make that, how to train the neocognitron. For example, uh, in the conventional uh, deep neural networks, it, although it has the large ability, we have to use a huge amount of data, input data for training. Well, uh, I'm trying to uh, make a system which can uh, be trained with much smaller number, of, a sm smaller amount of uh, training data. For example, uh, I'm, try I'm now trying to use interpreting vector. It's the uh, idea that the uh, output signal is uh, made the interpretation of two uh, different output. And the, uh, so uh, in that system, uh, we try to uh, uh, test to which uh, pattern uh, made of uh, interpretation of two uh, stimulus patterns uh, will be, uh, well, it's difficult to explain it. Well, uh, which is uh, most uh, resembling to the uh, interpreting uh, image. So uh, in that case, uh, even if uh, we use only small number of training patterns, and the uh, well, training pattern is uh, emulated by uh, make the uh, interpretation between uh, two uh, training vectors. Uh, recently, I uh, extended to four training ve four uh, interpret ve four vectors made by uh, interpreted vector. So, uh, in uh, if we look at it in the vector space, uh, it the interpretation of uh, the image using the four or uh, by the hyperplane made of four reference vectors. So, uh, by using it. Uh, the, uh, well, we can say that the, uh, well, uh, in the <clears throat> conventional neural networks, a huge amount of uh, training data is uh, required. But uh, in the interpreting vector, we try to make it uh, during the, well, recognition phase, not during the training phase. So uh, even if we use only a small number of training vectors, uh, we can uh, have this situation which resemble the, uh, well, uh, the situation where the huge amount of data is presented. So uh, the uh, deformed patterns are made into the network, not during the uh, training phase, but during the recognition phase. So uh, we can recognize patterns with uh, smaller number of training vectors. So uh, that's one of the things I'm uh, trying to use, uh, trying to well, make the research. That would be very, very valuable. I wonder, changing, uh, changing the focus now, do you remember um, Anything of interest from the early days of INNS or JNNS, mm -hmm. the founding of the societies? Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> I uh, look at the history of the old document. And uh, it was uh, 1987 when ITP first international conference on neural networks was held in San Diego. 
And uh, in 1988, INS was uh, established. And uh, on the year uh, we uh, decided to publish uh, official journal uh, Neural Networks. Before that time, uh, we had uh, only one a journal which can, we can uh, submit our uh, papers was uh, Biological Cybernetics. Uh, the old name of the journal was Kibernetic. It was published in Springa in Germany. And uh, in 1988, uh, Neural Networks was first established and uh, the and also in 1988, we had the first con conference uh, organized by INS in Boston. And also uh, at the same time, uh, well, ITP, uh, well, uh, we had the uh, conference, uh, International Conference of Neural Networks, ICNN, in San Diego. So uh, from 1989, uh, we uh, tried to uh, make a conference, IJCNN, uh, together with INNS and IEEE. And uh, in 1989, uh, we established JNNS, Japanese Neural Network Society in Japan. And uh, <clears throat> In 1991, uh, ENNS uh, had the conference, uh, ICON, I International Conference of Artificial Neural Networks in Helsinki, Finland. And uh, at that time, uh, we had the uh, neural network a journal, or INNS had journal of neural networks. And from that time, we uh, decided to publish it uh, jointly by INNS, JNNS, uh, ENNS. So uh, I think it the early days of uh, neural networks research, how the, uh, well, uh, how the meetings are made. Yes. What about for the future? Uh, do you have any suggestions for the role that INNS, JNNS should play in the future? What should they mm -hmm. be doing? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think it's important to make the research on the uh, brain and not only the uh, well, research on the uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I look at the history of the uh, neural networks. Well, uh, in uh, we had the <coughs> boom in 1960s. That that was the first boom uh, during that time. Perceptron was very popular. And uh, we had the winter age, and in 19, uh, around 19, uh, end of 1980, uh, we had the second boom of neural networks, which were made by the uh, propagation. And uh, we again had the winter age, and now in the, uh, we are in the third boom, um, made of uh, deep neural networks. So uh, in order to prevent entering again into the winter age, we have to prepare to the, the future. And I think it's important to learn from the biological brain. And uh, we have to make the uh, model of uh, information processing in the uh, biological brain. And for that purpose, the, uh, we have to know the uh, mechanism of uh, neural networks in the brain. And I think it's important to you make uh, neural network models of the um, brain. And in order to make the uh, model, uh, 
the uh, deep conventional uh, deep neural networks is uh, very uh, become a very powerful tool for uh, well making the uh, model of the biological brain. And the, at the same time, the uh, the model of, of the biological uh, neural networks give us a large hint for the future of the uh, artificial neural networks. What advice would you give for a researcher just starting out in the field? Hmm. I, I think, uh, as I told you now, uh, it's important to learn from the biological brain. So uh, the cooperation between uh, our artificial neural networks and uh, the research on the uh, neurophysiological and uh, uh, psychological research on the uh, visual system of mammals is very important for the future of uh, artificial neural networks. Do you have any other comments that you would like to make uh, that you have not uh, uh, mentioned so far? Mm, well, uh, I'd like to repeat again that we have to learn from the biological brain. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so we have a consistent theme. Mm. Well, Professor, uh, Prof Professor Fukushima, yeah. then thank you very, very much for your time. I've been much, I've much enjoyed uh, this time with you, and. Uh, I hope that you continue to have a, a healthy and productive uh, a career, even at, at this age. So, mm. Thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoyed talking with you. <laughs>